Nicole Kessinger is the epitome of actions speak louder than words, but I didn't realize how bad it was until I found myself knee deep in 2000 pages worth of police discovery. Welcome to That's My Opinion, where we deep dive into the stories and topics everyone's talking about, but with a fresh perspective that is all opinion based. Let's just get that right out of the way. In this video, we'll deep dive into Kessinger's story, breaking down her statements, timelines, and actions to reveal inconsistencies that might change the way that we view this case. And at the end of the video, I will give you some bombshell claims that honestly blew my own mind. If you aren't familiar with this case, I will give you a short synopsis right now. However, I do have a deep dive on my channel and we'll link it in the description box down below. But. In 2018, Chris Watts shocked the world when he confessed to murdering his pregnant wife, Shanann, and their two young daughters, Bella and Celeste, in Frederick, Colorado. Initially, Chris appears on the news pleading for his family's safe return, but soon the horrific truth was revealed. Watts had been leading a secret life with his mistress, Nicole Kessinger, who we're talking about today, who would later become a key figure in this investigation. And this case captivated the nation. And the first time I ever saw a police interview with Nicole Kessinger, it immediately, immediately raised red flags for me. And I was not the only one. Now, I found that the easiest way for me to understand this is in a timeline format. So I'll be going by significant dates, followed by the world according to Nicole Kessinger and her contradictory statements. I cannot show the discovery on YouTube because I do not have permission to do so. However, if you would like to fact check what I'm saying, you are more than welcome to find the discovery yourself. But I got this from the discovery interviews and her videotaped interviews and her tape recorded interviews just so we know where I got this information from. You are more than welcome to go listen to all of that, but let me just tell you, listening to her for hours talk so highly of herself, it's a journey, I'll tell you. So we know that Nicole Kessinger and Chris Watts start talking about May or June of 2018. They start talking at Anna Darko, where both of them are working, and she states that he's not wearing a wedding ring, and there's no mention of his wife or children, but on a later date, he admits to kids and going through a separation with his significant other, in her words. And we know that his significant other is Shanann Watts. And around that time, we know that Shanann surprises Chris with the news that they are expecting. This is a video she uploads on her very public Facebook. And June 17th, Shanann posts a Father's Day message to Chris on her Facebook. Chris, we are so incredibly blessed to have you. You do so much every day for us and take such great care of us. You are the reason I was brave enough to agree to number three. From laundry to kid showers, you are incredible and we are so lucky to have you in our life. Happy Father's Day. In an interview on August 15th, Kessinger would state that she does not maintain social media accounts, alluding to the fact that she would never see these things. She would never know about these things. In June of 2018, Shanann and her daughters would fly to North Carolina to be with family, and this is when everything really takes off for Nicole and Chris. End of June or early July, they meet at a park near her house for the first time. They're talking every single day. In July of 2018, Chris and Nicole start a physical relationship. Now, in an interview on August 15th, Nicole Kessinger states, and I quote, that this is one of the few times I had been in public with Chris Watts. But in that same interview, she claims that they traveled to the sand dunes during the week of the 4th of July. Friday, July 6th and Saturday, July 7th, they go to a movie theater, attempted to seek Jurassic Park. The show is sold out. Then they walk to a beach near Victoria's Secret and talk there outside in public for two hours. Saturday, July 14th, they go to the Shelby Mustang museum around other people in public. July 21st, 2018, they go to the Bandemere Speedway. Prior to that, they go to a rooftop bar in Morrison where they have lunch together. July 28th and July 29th, they go to the Great Sand Dunes National Monument. They then go on to Colorado Springs and have lunch at BJ's. And on August 11th, they go to the Lazy Dog Bar. Yes, seems like very few public outings. July 4th, it's, this is comical to me. So we have to go back to July 4th because I, I swore to you I was going to go by a timeline. So July 4th, Nicole Kessinger goes to the Watts home for uh, the only time, the first time. Because Kessinger states the only time she visits the Watts home is the second weekend of July. But in another interview, she states that this would be the first time that she would go to the house. 
In a separate interview, she claimed that she was only there briefly both times. And in another interview, she would tell the police that she was there sitting on the floor in their living room, looking around, setting up a fitness app where Chris cooked her chicken and carrots for lunch. So yes, I guess the idea of brief, what that means to you and what that means to me is very different. July 14th, they go to the Shelby American Collection Car Museum. She drives to his home in her Toyota 4Runner and claims that she went into the house and this was the second time that she went there. And I would like to know where you parked and how you entered the house because they had a ring doorbell. So how did you skip the cameras? She also stated that this was the day that she had her Mother Teresa change of heart. This man has a gorgeous house. He has a gorgeous wife. He has gorgeous children. Why would you ever want to give all that up? And then she claimed, and I quote, find a way to fix this and make it work. However, from this day until the day that the tragedy occurred, she continues to barrage him with nude photos, sleep with him, and go on dates with him. And her behavior compared to what she says tells me that in no way is she interested in him working things out with his wife. But then on July 21st, they go on another date, even though she's had this change of heart, to the Bandamere Speedway and watch drag races. And on July 24th of 2018, we have Nicole Kessinger's Google history. Man I'm having an affair with says he'll leave his wife. Which is a very interesting search history after you've told the police that he was separated and finalizing a divorce. So by definition... This is not an affair. So Nicole backed away a bit so he would try to fix his relationship with Shanann. That was important to her. And I would like to know what backing away means for her because to me, it means backing away from the situation in its entirety. We're going to cut off communications. We're going to stop sleeping with them. We're going to stop going on dates with them. And she did none of these things. Okay, great. July 25th, Chris is on the phone with Shanann, and this might be one of my favorite reports. During that conversation, Kessinger called Watts and left a voicemail following, and I quote, an eerily disconcerting childlike giggle. She told Watts, I miss your face, and I was just calling you to say hi, call me back. I will try to insert these in here, but I have to tell you every time I've heard them. Hi. <laughs> it's me. I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. And again, she was so concerned about his marriage and the state that it was in. She had an overnight with him at the Great Sand Dunes National Park from July 28th to July 29th. Nicole talked about a phone conversation that she had with Chris Watts prior to him leaving for North Carolina. And during the conversation, she said that she tried to convince Chris to fix his relationship with Shanann. Nicole said that she wanted to know that Chris had done what he could to repair his relationship prior to her coming into his life, which would be very noble of her if that was true. We know that on July 30th, Chris Watts gives Nicole Kessinger a love note. And on July 30th, we also know that Kessinger leaves a voicemail in these reports. And I quote, intermixed with her creepy giggles. <laughs> and she asked Watts to call her back. And I personally, I am just wondering if you leave creepy giggle messages for all of your friends. And we know that on July 31st, Chris Watts goes to North Carolina to be with Shanann and his daughters. And Kessinger tells the police that Chris claims he will try to fix his relationship, but Shanann refuses. Nicole says, and I quote, I thought I had convinced him to make peace with her. And I was like, if you guys are gonna work on this, like I'm out because what's the point? But through the entirety of the trip, we know that Chris and Nicole speak frequently while he's there and he goes into the basement to call her while his family is upstairs on august 2nd of 2018 we have chris watts transferring an image into a secret calculator application and we also have police note under it that says i'm certain watts communicated far more with kessinger that is reflected on his phone data perhaps facilitated through the secret calculator app it became apparent that he was receiving assorted nude images of Kessinger that she was taking by herself and sending to Watts, which then he stashed in that application to prevent Shanann from ever seeing them. And then in the report, we have Watts transferring so many images, which tells us 
that Kessinger is just sending nude after nude after nude or whatever picture it is. On August 3rd, we know through reports that Watts has transferred more images of Kessinger into his secret calculator app, which would imply to the police that she is, in fact, sending more pictures. August 4th, while continuing to talk to him every day and just, you know, telling the police that she wants him to work it out with his wife, she is at home searching for two hours to dose wedding dresses. Now, I don't claim to be smart, but I got a couple pebbles in here that could put a couple things together and something ain't adding up. But she also states in another report, and I quote, I told him, I mean, I really try to take everything slow with this whole situation. Very slow. You saw him for the first time outside of work at the end of June, and by August 4th, you're looking up wedding dresses. What? August 7th is when we find out that Nicole was talking to Charlotte Nelson, her quote unquote best friend, and Nicole tells her friend that their relationship was very positive, and she was very positive about Watts. She was enjoying their relationship. She states that when Chris returned home from North Carolina, he and Nicole spoke by phone, and Chris told Nicole that Shanann was preparing to finalize their divorce. And we now know that on August 8th, even though Kessinger had told the police that their relationship relationship was not that serious. It's not that deep. Searched on Google topics related to marrying your mistress. In a statement to police, she tried to separate herself from Chris and said, I only saw him a few times since he got back. He wanted to see me more, but I needed space. He gets back from North Carolina on the 7th. He goes back to work on the 8th. He comes to your house on the 8th. You guys go on a date on the 11th. And then everything horrific happens on the 12th and 13th. Out of five days, you saw him twice and continued to correspond with him every single day. I'm confused as to where the space is. We know for a fact that on August 9th, Shanann leaves for Arizona for her business trip. And after she leaves for her trip and leaves the girls with Chris, on Saturday, August 11th, Chris hires a babysitter to go to the lazy dog with Nicole Kessinger. And Nicole Kessinger, and I quote, anytime his kids could be in like his life for hours or for days, whenever they were home, I made sure I wasn't a presence in life so he could be the best dad that he needed to be. But at the Lazy Dog, Chris makes it clear that he is now filing from divorce from Shanann. So Shanann didn't want it and Chris wanted it, but then Shanann didn't want it, but Shanann was finalizing it, but then Chris was filing for it and we never get an answer from Nicole on who's filing or who's ending or when it's ending. We don't have any uh, text messages to go by on maybe what they talked about or their whereabouts. However, we do have Nicole Kessinger's Google search on topics like, this is for 18 years and older, how to prepare for butt stuff. Yeah, I bet you wish you deleted that when you deleted all those text messages. On August 12th, we have text messaging between Nicole Kessinger and her best friend, Charlotte Nelson, where she tells Charlotte Nelson explicit details about their intimate life. She also states, I feel like I will always be second place. Like he's been there, done that. It's early though. We will see, she says. He seems too good to be true. And at this point, this is what you're telling your best friend. Now, Nicole tells the police that Chris Watts tells her on August 12th that he will not be coming into the office on Monday and he will be going straight to the field. And we have a phone call between them at 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., but she cannot recall any details from this phone call. Yet in the discovery, there are seven pages where you are recalling conversations from June 25th or June 26th, July 27th, July 4th, July 14th, July 15th, July 19th, July 20th, while he was in North Carolina and August 8th. There's August 11th and August 13th, you have conversations that you remember with him. The day everything happened, the day you claimed you didn't really talk to him, yet you can remember nothing from a two hour phone call that you had days prior to being interviewed. But then on an interview on August 16th, Kessinger revealed having extensive phone contact with Watts prior to and during the days law enforcement was actively searching for his family. Just to add that in there. Now there are seven pages 
that I read off of all of the dates in the discovery. Like I said, I can't show them on screen, but you can go find them for yourself. And all of those dates have conversations and what they talked about and what Nicole remembered from those dates. And I find it interesting that most of these conversations are not showing Shanann in the best light. And they were in detail. And you have no problem remembering those. We know for a fact on Monday, August 13th at 1.48 a.m., Shanann returns home. We know that between that time and 5 a.m., Chris Watts does the unthinkable. Now, Nicole tells the police that on Monday she was not concerned at all because Shanann was probably just mad, took the girls and left. And when asked about Chris not going into the office in the morning, Nicole Kessinger states, it's not an uncommon thing for ops guys to go straight to the field. But on a different report, she also states that during a phone call with Chris Watts, she asked him why he had not come into the Anadarko office on the 13th. She said that it was ironic his wife was missing and he did not come into the office that day. So she questioned him about it, and she recalled him telling her on Sunday, August 12th, that he was not going to be in the office. So you're not concerned because you think that this is a regular marital dispute, but at the same time, you think it's ironic that his wife is missing, so you question him why he didn't come into the office? I need to know on Monday whether you thought she was missing or whether you just thought she packed up and left her things. We know that at 1701 hours or 5 p.m., Kessinger makes two unanswered calls to Watts, which he has deleted from his phone. And at 5.30, Watts made an unanswered call to Kessinger, which was also deleted from his phone. And at 11.09 p.m., Kessinger and Watts held a 51-minute conversation, which has also been deleted from the phone. Nicole claims that Chris told her that he had a conversation with Shanann. Shanann tells him that she's pregnant, but the baby isn't his. And Shanann told Chris that she would be taking the kids that day, and she was not concerned. Shanann and the girls had just left the house. In another statement, Nicole called Chris about 4 p.m. They had a short conversation with him, saying that the police were at his house. Chris was texting and saying that the police were there. Shanann's friend Nikki was there, and she had called the police. In her statement, in her words, she said that Chris said that Nikki was upset and the cops were searching his home. Like this was all current. It was all happening. Nicole called the police at 1.40 p.m. Were they still at the house at 4 p.m.? She also states that they FaceTimed each other and he told her that he was cleaning to keep things off his mind. And again, Nicole said that he was always cleaning his home, so she did not think anything of it. And in the same breath, in the same paragraph, honestly, guys, it's insane when you read these things. She says that Chris said he had to wash the children's sheets because they smelled. And Nicole was suspicious of this comment. As Chris was so clean, she did not know why the kids' sheets would be dirty. Could it be that they were children and you should wash sheets? But also, in the line above that, you didn't think anything was suspicious. And then in the second line, immediately suspicious. She then again states that Shanann was just having a day. And Nicole would give it a day. I'd give it a day. I want to see what happens. But then, right after she says that she would give it a day, right under that, she states... That Monday, in the middle of the night, I called him because I was so scared I couldn't sleep. And then in another statement after this one, she goes back to her original story that she believed Shanann had become upset and just left. She goes back and forth on this one a lot. Nicole also then remembers another conversation that she had with Chris on the 13th. Very many, for somebody who didn't talk a lot that day, that Shanann had left her wedding ring at the house. And Chris asked Nicole how much she thought that the ring would be worth. And she responded by telling him to pawn it. She said in the interview, I don't know, man, it, it made me feel weird. I can't believe I have to say this, but I just said pawn it. So Shanann... A woman who got mad and left with her kids but is blowing off steam and will come back and you're trying to counsel Chris to get his life back together with this woman because you want to fix his marriage because you're just such a good person. Pawn her ring. And this was a funny side note to me that these lines are directly one after another. She states that Chris was always more into her than she was into him. And in the next line, literally the one right below it, she said that they had discussed long-term plans and they had agreed to live a more simple life. And then in the next line, they talked about marriage. But these were not deep conversations. 
but you were shopping wedding dresses. <laughs> she said that she did not hear a lot from Chris that day. He texted her and said it was a busy day. Nothing he said was alarming. She left work at three. According to her time card, she returned home to her good friend, Jim. Jim's there, perfect. We have a third party to corroborate this story. Oh, but in all the police statements, she refused to provide the police with his last name or information because she didn't want him to be involved. But Jim was her house guest on Monday and he is a very good family friend. Somebody who could tell the police where you were at what time. Because we have no idea where you were at any of these times. And Jim could clear you of anything, any suspicions. And you just refuse to let Jim answer this question. However, Nicole recalls getting home. Chris texted her something about his family being gone, and then Chris asked Nicole to call him, and that's when she became concerned, even though she states that on Monday she wasn't concerned at all. She also claims in an interview that on Monday night, Monday, the night after everybody is missing, that he wanted the divorce, and she said that this made her so suspicious. Yet we know that he made it clear to her on the 11th when they went to the Lazy Dog that he was filing for divorce. And we know before that conversation that every conversation you had with Chris before that, Shanann was finalizing the divorce. 2 a.m. August 14th, Nicole Kessinger searched for Shanann Watts. And on Tuesday, August 14th, we know that Chris Watts pleads with the news for the safe return of Shanann and the girls. Nicole tells the police that that day she was talking to him and he was a hot mess. And that is when she decided to cut him off. This is also the day that she claimed that during her lunch break, she reviewed the media and found that Shanann was 15 weeks pregnant. And she claims that she called him and she was asking him, what did you do? What did you do? Because she was so worried. So naturally on August 14th, after Watt's family had still not been located or heard from, Nicole Kessinger decides to contact law enforcement. She wanted to tell law enforcement about her relationship and offer possible assistance in locating Shanann and the girls. However, she does this after on August 14th, which she admits to deleting every single thing about Chris Watts off her phone. She also admits to police that she had asked Chris to delete his text messages to keep their relationship secret from his friends. And it's funny because you deleted everything you could, but you didn't think about your web history. No, no because we have that. Where on August 14th, you searched, can cops trace text messages? How long do phone companies keep text messages? Difference between text message content and text message detail. Can you get a printout of text messages? On August 16th, we know that the bodies of Shanann, Celeste, and Bella were found, and Nicole Kessinger has another interview in which her father is present for. Now, she is not a minor and he is not a lawyer, so I'm very confused as to why he was able to sit in on this conversation. Because I'm pretty sure if I got pulled down to the police station right now for a quadruple homicide, they wouldn't just let me grab one of my girlfriends and go in, or a parent, because I'm 39 years old. Now, Nicole speaks to police before this interview and consented to them taking her phone. And yet during this interview, she's still reluctant to give them her phone. And I quote, I really want to help you guys. I do. I feel like this whole thing is going to be crazy regardless of whether I give you my phone or not. That's kind of how I look at it. She also states in this interview, okay, on the same day that Shanann and the girls were found, when asked about why Chris would have hurt his children, she said the only thing I could think of was that the kids may have seen him killing Shanann so he chose to kill them as well, which is almost identical to one of the variations that Chris gave to the police about what happened. Who knows? Maybe she's a medium. She also states in this interview that Nicole knew of no other stressors than finances, yet was able to give them a seven-page dissertation on why Chris Watts did not want to save his marriage with Shanann. We also know that on this day, Nicole Kessinger spent nearly four hours searching Google and the internet for Watts news outlets and news accounts of Shanann's disappearance. And these are all deleted, which to me would be perfectly reasonable to search what everybody is saying. Why would you delete that? 
if I knew somebody who was missing or I was in in an investigation like that, you bet your ass I would be searching the internet for everything. But you delete that. I bet you wish you deleted the one on butt stuff, don't you? August 13th, while she's still in the process of giving the police interviews, because the reports that I have compiled, all this information range from between August 15th and August 27th. But August 19th, Nicole Kessinger searched the internet for topics related to Amber Fry. And if you're not familiar with who Amber Fry is, Scott Peterson is another convicted family annihilator. He killed his pregnant wife and their unborn baby. And Amber Fry is the woman that he was having an affair with at the time. Now, she searches topics related to Amber Fry, such as Amber Fry's book deal, her net worth, and my personal favorite, did people hate Amber Fry? And like I said in my last video, no, we do not, because Miss Amber Fry called the police immediately and handed over absolutely everything, never deleting anything because she had nothing to hide. So there's a difference. If you are wondering what the group consensus is, Amber Fry is a queen. At this point, Chris Watts was charged, pled guilty, and has been convicted and will spend the rest of his life in prison where he belongs. But there are a couple of claims by Nicole Kessinger that just didn't make sense. In a police interview, Nicole Kessinger claims that she did not know of his significant other's name for a while until after she met Chris. And if you watch these interviews, she is violently uncomfortable saying Shanann's name. However, all of this took place in 2018. Nicole meets Chris and starts dating him in 2018. And during the investigation, they found that on September 1st of 2017, Nicole Kessinger searched the internet for Shanann Watts. She then performed another search on January 7th of 2018 for Shanann Watts. And in August of 2017, a search for Chris Watts. Now, another thing that you could do in 2018 was you could see people's public Facebook information without a Facebook account. Who had public Facebook information? Shanann Watts. And if you did search Shanann, you would know that she had multiple illnesses because that's something that she talked about openly for her business on Facebook, which you told law enforcement you knew nothing about. You would also see the post of her pregnancy. You would also see the now infamous footage of Chris Watts finding out that she was pregnant. And you would also see the Father's Day post to Chris. But, but that's all just my opinion, right? Because we don't know if she actually looked at Shanann's Facebook. Or do we? Because on August 4th at 2.10 p.m., Kessinger searched Google for Chris Watts and Shanann Watts' Facebook accounts. I tried to make up a clear picture, but I'm still so confused. In my opinion, I think that Nicole Kessinger had everything to do with the disappearance of Shanann and the girls, whether it was doing it physically or doing it mentally. I personally think that Nicole was a girl who wanted the win. And I think when she got it, she had to cut that tether so fast to save her own ass but that's just my opinion. If you found this deep dive insightful, don't forget to subscribe and like and share your thoughts in the comments, especially if you caught any details that I may have missed. I know there are so many Reddit conspiracies about this case that I never even went down. So if you have any of those, you can leave those in the comment box down below as well. For more in-depth breakdowns and true crime analysis, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next video. I'm Bacon Bears, and that's my opinion. I gotta tell you, this one left me Tired. She was tired, girl. <laughs>